Hi, I'm Luke. Today on Auto Darts, we are going to talk about the Nerf Rival Finisher. Hi, I'm Luke. Today on Auto Darts, we're going to talk about the Nerf Rival Finisher. The Rival series is now very, very fleshed out. I think we've seen the most we're pretty much going to see from the Rival line. I think the Perseus is the epitome of the flywheel powered blaster for the Rival line. But I do hope to stand corrected with some ultra mega amazing, even better Rival Blaster. But what we have been seeing are a lot of incremental upgrades and I feel that the finisher is one of them. This blaster holds seven rounds. It has some minor improvements, some quirky little aesthetic things and a few grievances on my part. Uh, right off the bat, we've already upgraded this blaster to one of our pre-cut K26 springs, so if you are looking for one of those, we've got that in the description. This blaster does take a K25 or K26 quite well, uh, increasing the stock performance from around 88 to 90, which is the, the stock rating is 90 FPS, to about 125. It seems like going any farther than that definitely causes some problems. Now right off the bat, we get something kind of unique, kind of new, which I really like. We have an angled uh, magwell here, and that is the first of its kind for a magwell being in front of the guard. So in reality, this is really much more like, say, a recon, um, though a recon doesn't have an angled grip, uh, angled magwell, excuse me, but having that up front there is sort of the most logical placement of it in a blaster. So much so that many users have taken the Kronos and put either Talon mags up here, Rival mags up here, and a variety of other mods. Now comparing these two blasters is quite fair. They're very close in price, though this one does cost a bit more. The most interesting innovation in this blaster was supposed to be this mag. Now, I have a bone to pick with this mag because I think it's totally pointless and very much just a gimmick. This is a seven round mag. A seven round mag does not take that long to fill. Let, let's just look at this. I have, uh, I actually, if I could count, I've got seven. <laughs> so I'm gonna load this rip mag normally. One, 1,000, two, 1,000. Three, one thousand, four. Maybe it's four seconds to load that. Now, what this mag is supposed to have, if I dump the contents, is you pull this slide down, which in itself is problematic because it doesn't, it, it tends to be a little clunky. So I like to include that in the loading operation. But the idea here is that you can shove multiple balls in here at once. And I really don't find this to be any easier than loading a normal magazine. So let's try that again, just counting. One, 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 one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. I might have saved a second. Guys, I saved a second on, nope, I still have to load this back up. I don't think I saved any time. Let's say I saved a second. It's a second on a seven round magazine with an extra operation and it's kind of clunky. And I have to admit, I was pretty disappointed because what I thought from the marketing and the leaked packaging that we saw months earlier was that you'd be able to load while the magazine is in the blaster. Now that turned out not to be the case because you cannot pull the follower mechanism down without taking the mag out first. Removing the mag brings up another one of my grievances with the blaster and that is this mag release. I have no idea why this couldn't just be a paddle release. Perhaps it's a durability decision, but this push button mag release is just not my favorite. Uh, if I end up doing much more beyond changing the base uh, spring, I might look at redesigning a mag release for this. It looks like it would be very simple. I do believe there's one on Thingiverse as well. So goofy loading mech aside, uh, you should also know that this mag cannot be used in other magazines. However, other magazines can be used in this blaster. Now this is actually the configuration and design of my next flywheel blaster I've been working on, where the mag is up front because it's the fastest way to reload. It's also a great spot to connect a proton pack back to a pack. Now the blaster I'm working on is a flywheel blaster, not a springer, so they're very different in that method. But I am glad to see something different nonetheless. There's a funny little peek peekaboo here that happens. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's sort of an odd choice um, to have that actually punch out and then retract. But um, overall, I believe it was done just to save some space internally. And 
you know, it is what it is ultimately. It might also be a safety feature. Um, another feature I have noticed on this blaster, or really not so much a feature, but a an issue, is that I think they've designed this bore a little tighter. Now, I didn't measure this or compare, but it seems to have problem with non-genuine rival ammo. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's completely intentional in order to capture more of the market share on the ammo itself. But that is speculation, so I can't say for sure. Whew. I have chosen to film again on a very hot day, so I am just sweating it up here. Wish I had air conditioning in my garage. My warehouse also does not have air conditioning, so I think it's probably only fair that I'm home suffering in this while my employees do the same. Thank you to all my team while I'm at it. Uh, the blaster is quite comfortable. I would say the grip is about as comfortable as the Kronos. The Kronos has kind of a funky bump for my hands, but that's very, very personal. This whole grip is very slim, but it does feel very good. It fits large hands just fine, and the trigger feels like it's in the right place. It's got a funky blade trigger, which is definitely a style decision, but I don't have any problem firing it, other than I do find that my finger likes to walk down towards the base here. That said, I haven't had any issues with pinching like I have on a few other blasters that drove me crazy. I'm not really a huge fan of the styling as far as this big big old block here. I'm not sure why this couldn't have been rounded off a bit more or built into the design instead of just looking like it was slapped on. I mean, to me, it almost like, I know this is not the case at all. These are totally different designs, but it, it's like they started with something close to this geometry and then slapped a magwell in there. In reality, the internals are very different, so it is very much not the case. The blaster is a little finicky to get put back together, but I would call it a medium difficulty as far as modability when modifying just the spring. Overall, the blaster is quite easy to prime, even with the heavier load in here. In the end, I think it's a fairly solid blaster. It's a lot of fun. It's not game-changing or groundbreaking in any way. It's got a fun, kind of funky aesthetic and kind of funky dis design choices all, all over the place. We've got the previously mentioned magazine, which doesn't really add any value in my book. We've got the odd mag release, and then we've got this sling point that's right here. I guess that's actually not that bad now that I'm looking at it. I just wouldn't sling this small of a blaster to a single point generally. I would probably look at doing a holster of some sort, though perhaps that's an awkward blaster to holster. That said, not going to complain about a hole there. It just seems like a little, little bit funky. Maybe it's not that bad. I'm picky sometimes. That much should be apparent. These are all my opinions, of course. Um, it's not a bad buy. It's not a bad blaster, but it's probably not going to be as popular as, say, the Kronos was. Uh, coming out first and just coming in at a good price point and just being really easy to, to mod and do all kinds of crazy stuff with. I will be curious to see what people do with this. I will probably make a Springer Proton Pack version out of this because I already do have an adapter to either cut short a mag or replace the mag, where you could just lock this in place and then that would work with the proton pack. Obviously, it would be a single shot. That has been a surprisingly common request to make uh, caliburns that shoot rival that connect to the proton pack just so you have to never reload. So that's definitely something I'm going to be visiting in the future here in another video. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed a look at the rival finisher. It's a pretty solid blaster. I'd give it four out of five stars. Thanks for watching. Until next time. I'm out of darts.